Dr. Holliday, wh why do we need a new vision in Kentucky? Well, I think we have a new vision because uh, we have a new generation of learners. We have uh, learners who are going to have to be competitive uh, worldwide for jobs. Uh, Kentucky no longer competes for jobs just with Indiana, Ohio, or West Virginia. Uh, our children must compete with uh, children in New Delhi for these jobs, and I think the president says it best. It's, it's no longer a nice to have. It, it is a necessity to reach higher levels of standards for our children to have the promise of tomorrow. And Bob, I, w I would think you would also um, uh, go along with that, that it's not only just a state by state. We're looking at a national picture. We're looking at an international <laughs> picture. And that's the reason that uh, after uh, 20 years of, of one educational system, we're slowly uh, going to use uh, another way to look at all of these different areas that we're going to talk about that are contained in SB1. Well, that's exactly right, Bill. Um, <clears throat> I think Terry has said it very succinctly, but uh, we have seen uh, uh, over the last, certainly the last decade, maybe even longer, uh, that uh, the rest of the world has figured out America's secret. Uh, and that secret through almost the entire 20th century was the uh, high level to which we educated our population. Uh, but where America was first in all of the measures that you can do internationally, uh, we're no longer first. Uh, in, in a number of measures, uh, baccalaureate degree attainment, uh, the proportion of people in our population compared to other countries. Uh, when I graduated from college, we were first. Today, we're tenth and we're falling. Um, uh, our students, our best students uh, in our K-12 system, competing on international exams in mathematics and science. Uh, where we used to be first, now we're at the bottom of the heap, uh, ranking 28th, 30th, 31st. Um, these are not acceptable, and uh, the future of this country uh, is dependent on our capacity uh, to correct that and, and regain that competitive advantage that we had for the better part of the century. And, and Phil, um, you just can't tinker with one little part of the, uh, the mechanism. You just can't uh, uh, fix a, a part here and a part there. This is uh, a sweeping change in SB1, well, and it, it, it affects teachers. Yes, it is. It is a sweeping change, but I think if you go back um, to CARA, the Kentucky Education Reform Act of 1990, uh, one of the things that we came out of the CARA with was uh, uh, a statement that said, all children can learn, and most at high levels. Then No Child Left Behind came along and helped us operationalize that a little bit more by saying, we're not going to leave any child behind. Then Senate Bill 1 comes along and says, not only we're not going to leave any child behind, but we're going to operationalize the fact that all children can learn by saying, and they're going to be ready for work or college.